Hello, movie freaks, and welcome to Shelved. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. All right, now that the introduction is out of the way, let's get into it. Um, I grew up a huge comic book fan. Now, I wasn't able to have a lot of comics as a kid just because I didn't have access. There were no real comic book stores around me. So the few that I had were like my Bibles. Like, I mostly relied on the cartoons and the action figures or movies that were out at the time. And I was a huge Batman fan because of the animated series, but there was one hero that stood above all for me, and that was Spider-Man. The only comics I really owned as a kid were Spider-Man. I remember getting a ton of Spider-Man toys for my birthday and Christmas, and I watched the Fox Spider-Man cartoon constantly. I still have the DVDs and check in on that from time to time. That show holds up, surprisingly. Well, in 2002, we got our first live-action Spider-Man movie, and it basically changed everything. It broke box office records, and along with the X-Men, changed the way superhero movies were made. Well, one thing that a lot of people might not know is that scripts for Spider-Man movies have been kicking around since the 80s. Now, there is a Spider-Man script from 1985 that we will be covering closer to the release of Spider-Man Homecoming, but for this episode, we are covering a different version from the 90s. So in the 80s, Canon Films held the rights to Spider-Man, Canon Films best being known for putting out all the Chuck Norris films of the 80s, all the B-movie Chuck Norris films. Um, Well, after Canon went out of business, the rights transferred to Carl Co., who was best known for movies like Terminator 2, Total Recall, Basic Instinct, and they quickly tapped James Cameron to write and direct. Um, Now, I cover the rest of the story in the episode, so I'm not going to really go into it here, But the quick version is after Cameron was off the project, another writer, David Cope, took over and turned in a draft in 1993. This draft would eventually become the Spider-Man movie that we know today, but this was an early draft, and even though it's similar, there's a lot of differences. Well, I brought back my guest from the first episode, Eric Zisselman, to sit down with me and discuss the Cameron treatment and the Cope rewrite. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it, so without further ado, let's talk Spider-Man from 1993. Microphone yeah. in his life. So. Yeah, I mean, it's your first time. Yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so did you do a little refresher today? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, I checked up on, uh, you know, I went through my notes here, um, tried to look at the script from from when I read it before. Yeah. And then uh, also was. I did. So, I'm actually currently doing some research on what uh, David Cope. I believe that's how yeah. It's pronounced. I, I don't. I don't know. How, we're gonna have to agree on a pronunciation. It's yeah. K O E P P. Right. So it's yeah. either Cope or I had a different. I guess Cope is what we'll say. Yeah, that's. that's I had a different funny. one in my head, but um, I guess that's the one that's rolling. I'm surprised out, so. by how much he's done and. Uh, well, still so I didn't. I didn't look this up. What has he done? All right. So he is a writer on uh, the first Mission Impossible. Really. Um, he was a writer like in one. Jurassic Park. What? Oh yeah. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, I did see that. Writer for obviously Spider Man. He's a writer for uh, War of the Worlds. Never. The two thousand four one. Uh, five. Yeah. Or two thousand five was that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like he, that. I guess he did both the screenplays for. Uh, Angels and Demons and Inferno. Really? Yeah, which I just watched Inferno. You did? Uh, I have not. So I read the Da Vinci Code and I liked it. Mm-hmm. I watched the movie and I liked it. Yeah. I own the Angels and Demons movie. I haven't seen it. Yeah, I haven't seen the second one. Yeah, and I, I haven't. I mean, I don't know. The, those things aren't highly I mean, regarded. I know what I'm but getting myself into yeah. when I'm watching it. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I got my Tom Hanks. He's got a slick back hair. <laughs> yeah. And he's running around Italy oh, wow. just uh, trying to solve. 500 year old riddles that yeah. have always been there but yeah. no one's ever seen them yeah and that that's what kind of pulls me into those is the mystery stuff yeah I mean, it's fun I didn't, I didn't realize he wrote those that's interesting it, well i i don't know if there's always one writer but i'm well, sure he collaborated i mean with so the someone. thing was he he's like according to the writers guild he wrote 2002 spider-man mm-hmm. but that movie has two different right like two different guys came in and worked on it after because this is his draft yeah. And then two other guys worked on this draft to turn it into the movie mm-hmm. that came out. Well, I'll tell you, they didn't do much of a... No, they, I mean... They may have brushed up little things, but uh, it's mostly his his story. Yeah, right I there. mean, reading the scripts, it's basically the movie we know with, mm-hmm. like, 
some things kind of shifted around and some other characters introduced like uh, doc ock is in the yeah, script who's sure. not in the movie mm-hmm. i mean he was in the second movie and it, I'm, it makes sense to pull him out because yeah. he doesn't really do anything in the script yeah uh, well i we don't know what's going to happen in, potentially in sequels so yeah. it's a good chance to uh introduce him but i did i did like that he was um, this kind of tragic figure off to the side. Yeah, because he doesn't really engage with Spider-Man really at all. Right. Like, I th- I mean, I think there's, like, one scene, like, at the end, mm-hmm. there's, like, the battle, and Doc mm-hmm. Ock comes in and is going after Osborn. Right. He's just screaming, kill him. Yeah. You know, get rid of him. Yeah. So. And then he just kind of fades into the distance during that battle and disappears. But, um, I mean, going back to the beginning, he, he gets introduced, and the accident happens that gives them both their situations mm-hmm. where Osborn gets his powers yep. from gas that apparently is x-ray gas yeah i mean the writing <laughs> um, in it is uh it, it makes it feel very animated the scene with uh i guess the the green gas that's literally crawling and then like grabs onto yeah. both uh you know the doctor and uh and norman so i it it is interesting you know they in the sam raimi version clearly there is no doc ock and uh we do have our uh, Willem Dafoe, who's strapped up. Yeah. But um, I did think that uh, Cope's version uh, would have been pretty cool because it, it did see it did seem pretty action packed from what I read. Yeah, I I um so I guess we should say that we were originally going to cover Cameron's script, and mm-hmm. then I found out that that wasn't really a full script; it was just a treatment. Yeah. And it's only like I think I think it's like eighty pages or something mm-hmm. like that, which I did send to you. I don't know how much of it you read. No, I didn't read too much, and I know it is a really well known treatment. You know, yeah. from what I've seen on the internet, people talking about all kinds of stuff that happened in that. Yeah, one. so I, I read both, and mm-hmm. I will say the Cameron movie sounded awesome. Okay. Like I was really into it. So I mean, the whole history of the thing was. Canon Films had the Spider-Man rights in the 80s, which Canon Films is mostly known for putting out all the B-movie Chuck Norris movies in the 80s. Okay. And they were kind of holding on to the rights for a long time until they went out of business because they're th- that's a whole situation. And then the company that put out Terminator 2, mm-hmm. it's like Carol Co. Productions, okay. they picked up the rights, and that's when Cameron came on. So there, there is an eighty, like eighty four or eighty five script for Spider Man that will be covered in a future episode, because uh, I'm sure that one's very different. I don't know yeah. much about that one, but that was the one the Canon Films had. So it's then it's got to feel very cartoony if it's. Oh, I'm sure, especially coming back. from the caliber of studio that they were. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah. So then Cameron was brought on. He he turned in a treatment, and then that treatment was kind of filtered through the system a little bit until Columbia Pictures eventually, eventually. Uh, Carol Co. I'm trying to remember the name of it. Carol Co. Mm-hmm. went out of business because they put out movies like uh, Terminator 2, Total Recall, uh, Basic Instinct, but then they put Classics. out Cutthroat Island and Showgirls, which are two of the biggest bombs of all time. Cutthroat that, Island? Never heard of that. It's one of the biggest bo- movie bombs of all time. All right. I think it's Cutthroat Island. Um, but, um, yeah, so that put them out of business, and mm-hmm. then the rights ended up going to Columbia Pictures, which is basically Sony, owned by Sony. And, um, yeah, it's Cutthroat Island. I was just <laughs> double-checking that because I had a note on it. Okay. Um, yeah, so then this Cameron script went to this David Kep guy, mm-hmm. or Cope. Kep, that's the other way I was thinking of it. Okay. Hey, um, listen, what, he's not listening, so I'm yeah. sure we're okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so Cope got the Cameron script, and he started to – that's where he wrote his draft of – and um well I'm messing with my headphones here. And um that's that's where we come in here now. Mm-hmm. Um so in the Cameron version, it was still two villains, but it was two different villains. It was Electro and Sandman. Gotcha. And Electro, he wasn't the same version of Electro from the comics. He was kinda like if you took Electro and smashed him together with Kingpin. He was this huge criminal guy and mm-hmm. Sandman was basically his like bodyguard. Okay. So and, they were working together. Yeah. Okay. But Sandman was definitely more of like the B tier character. Yeah, yeah, and the and the final fight is both of them against Spider Man, okay. and he basically gets like gets Electro to shock Sandman and turn him to glass, basically. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> and they they give you their like they the, the treatment's actually pretty well thought out. They give you the the origin of the characters, sure. where like Electro was in like Mexico or something, and he wandered into this. He's like running from the law. And wanders into this like electrical like 
art sculpture thing, basically, and he ends up getting zapped. Okay. And he becomes an electric man. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they, they kind of give you a similar uh, setup with Sandman, and neither one of them had the names from the comics, because right. in, in the comics it was Max Dillon was Electro, and oh, what is Sandman's name? Flint Marco. And there this, they're just, like, totally random <laughs> names. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the Cameron script was very 90s. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't... It was written in, like, 93. Or, I mean, no, I actually would have been, like, late 80s. So this might have been, like, 1990. Because okay. the, the script we read was from 93. What what makes it a 90s script? The humor. Okay. And just kind of the the structure of the movie. Like, as you're reading the treatment... Because it's not a full script. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of just descriptions of things. But he's, like, saying what he wants to happen when. It just feels, like, very 90s. Got like. It. I wish I could remember some specific jokes, but it, there's a lot of humor that just felt like, oh, I'm watching a movie from the 90s or okay. even the late 80s. Sure. Um, Carlton Strand, that was Electro's name. And they literally say he's like bigger than Trump, which is kind of funny in, in nowadays. Why does name sound like Strand? Strand does sound familiar. I think Strand might have been a different name in Ultimate Spider-Man. Maybe. Yeah, it sounds like some kind of villain, Strand. Yeah, but this I think Ultimate Spider-Man started in 2000, so this would have been way before that even existed. Okay. Um, I mean, the Cameron script goes into detail and things. Like, they give you reasons of why J. Jonah Jameson hates Spider-Man, mm-hmm. which is like, oh, he saw some cops roughing up a dude, so he stopped the cops, so now J. Jonah Jameson's like, oh, well, he beats up cops. Well, so, yeah, that was also in the, the yeah. Pope script, right? Yeah, there are, there's a few things that carry over. For mm-hmm. example, they both have a scene which I like to call the wet dream sequence, Yeah, yeah. where they wake up in bed and their web has, like... All They've over. shot web all over, yeah. it. and they the way it's described in both scripts sounds very much like a wet dream to me. Yeah, I mean, it, it sounded like he was uh, in a cocoon almost when, and, yeah. and all this webbing is coming out of like uh, like a millimeter like slit almost on his wrist. And yeah. Good lord, I couldn't imagine that <laughs> that evening. You know, him asleep and it's just engulfing him, and he's you know, I mean. Clearly, he's in his. Uh, he's clearly transforming that evening. Yeah, but, the um, transformation scene in the Cameron one is also very similar to the final movie that yeah, we got. Totally, and when it, you had the the DNA structures moving into yeah. one another. And I mean, there's some dialogue that carries over mm-hmm. word for word. And, I mean, as little dialogue as they show you in the treatment, mm-hmm. but um, they're just the scenes, the things that carry over, are kind of fun. Like uh, Cameron's the one that introduced the. Uh, the, the web spinning thing being part of his body. Right. Because in the comics, it was always something he made. Right. But the uh, web shooters in, are in both scripts, but it's a little different. In the Cameron script, he makes them just for show. So people don't think that this is part of his body and he's some sort of okay. freak or monster or whatever. And in the David Cope script... It's David, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, for some yeah, reason, no, I'm just blanking. David. I'm looking at um, It's a very late work night we're, when we're doing sure. this. So. Um, yeah, the... The web shooters serve a purpose where it's like when he's shooting the web, he can't direct it. And so basically he creates exactly. it to like direct it. And I, I like that. I like that addition. I thought the way they describe it in the camera and script is literally like something comes out of his wrist and it almost sounds a little body horror. And yeah, I didn't yeah. really like that. I like mm-hmm. I like it way better the way it turned out in the movie and the way the script, the David Kep script kind Definitely. of describes it. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, it sounded like they were, uh, you know, making something that almost funneled his uh, his web that came out of his wrist into i don't know you could almost look at it as like a toilet paper roll yeah that would, uh, you know angle it into it's a like if you put place. the nozzle of like a silly string there container you on your yeah. wrist sriracha bottle yeah you know, goes right in there. and in the camera script he talks about like dissecting wrist watches mm-hmm. and like putting a little thing oh and it's just for show yeah I, I thought that was pretty cool i mean they they're also you know not shying away showing that you know peter is a fucking genius. Yeah. You know, he's, uh... Which is something I actually thought the Amazing Spider-Man movies did pretty well. Mm-hmm. Because, for one, they put the web launchers in there. I actually like those Talking movies. About the, the new ones, Yeah, right? the Andrew Garfield movies. Okay. That was one thing I thought was lost in kind of the Sam Raimi movies, is yeah. like how smart he is. But I thought I think Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2 handled that better. I always thought he was uh, he was too pretty. Andrew uh, Garfield? Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't. So when the first one came it's too out, cool. I, I like both of those movies. To I don't know if you've seen both. Yeah, I, yeah, I've seen them. Um, I think everything was kind of rocky in the first movie, mm-hmm. but I feel like character-wise, they were all perfect in the second one. Like okay. I didn't really buy Andrew Garfield in the first movie. Yeah, but in the second one, him and Emma Stone both, I thought they were 
they had found their stride and were great. And I was okay. kind of, I'm kind of bummed they're not going to get a third one, but it is what it is. Okay. Um, I mean, as, as, as far as the Cameron script, I kind of just want to touch on a few things here so we can just get into the yeah, David it. Cope one. Um, yeah, the, the, I just want to finish up on the wet dream scene. And this one, it's literally described as he lifts the blankets and looks mm-hmm. down and just like webbing. And it's all like they t- talk about how white the webbing is. And so I'm like, yes. this is just so clearly a reference yeah. to that. Um, uh, there's definitely the carryover of the Green Goblin, how they're the Green Goblin character in the Cope script and in the film. It, it's all about like being a father figure. Mm-hmm. And that is kind of implied here with Electro, where Electro is looking for someone like him. And he hears about Spider-Man, who, not through wrestling, this time he has a public access show. Like, he starts off, like, he makes his costume, Mm -hmm. and he's doing tricks on the street for, like, fucking coins. Spider-Man's doing tricks on the street? Yeah. And then it becomes him going to birthday parties and doing tricks. And then it becomes him getting a small-time public access show... (laughs) And then it goes to him. This is getting, in the Cameron script. Yes, oh and this, then it goes to him getting like a syndicated show, and that's where Electro like sees him. But then it becomes an issue where like, oh, we can't give you money because we don't know who you are, and they're ripping him off. So then he kind of has to go out of that. It sounds like it would all be nailed in a montage, you know, just yeah. perfectly. But it's kind of spread out throughout the script because the syndicated TV show part actually doesn't come until like way later. But it's it's like that wrestling scene in the movie. Is like a short little section, but in sure. this, it's like that spread out. Well, I mean, shit, you got to be uh, at least a little charismatic to be to host your own uh, cable a- or public access yeah. TV show. And they say they they imply it to show on like late, like three in the morning sure. or midnight or something. Yeah, like that. that that's kind of nuts. I never thought of. You know, I mean, well, listen, I guess through that script, you're seeing the evolution of Spider-Man. Oh, absolutely. But uh, I've never... Like, he doesn't really become the hero until, like, the third act. Sure. Whereas yeah. in this one, it's the end of the first act where he's, you know, this was when Uncle mm-hmm. Ben dies and he becomes Spider-Man. Was, uh, was he as as witty as as I want him to be in the Cameron script? Like I said, it's a treatment. There's oh, not a lot sure. of dialogue, right, but right. yeah, they definitely imp- they definitely should talk about his wit, okay. and there there is a little dialogue at the beginning and at the end because right. at the beginning, the first couple of pages read exactly like a script. It's like it's at night, which a lot of the Spider-Man action takes place at night, actually. Okay, and um, As it should. You it, know? It, it's it just gives me more of a Batman vibe. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, Spider-Man, he's kind of day and night whenever Mm -hmm. but uh, yeah in the in the the early ons on the script a lot of it is at night yeah um but uh sorry i just keep looking off in that way Um, someone was creeping on no um but yeah uh what was i talking Uh, yeah so a lot of it it takes place at night and the beginning of the script opens up with him basically hanging out on the world trade center like Mm -hmm. telling the story and narrating the first little bit and then it goes into the movie proper, and mm-hmm. we don't. It kind of cuts back, like catches up to that point at some point, or like, oh, let me tell you the story so far, and then we get there, and then we move on. It seems like a real Spider-Man thing. That, yeah, that, which is very much Spider-Man's a very chatty comic book character. Right, right. And, he likes to narrate. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like most Spider-Man comics start with him swinging above the city. And it's like, oh, what am yeah. I doing today? Sure. Yeah. And that's very present, I think, in all of this, actually. Um, but yeah, so. One thing we talked about in the Batman one we did way back in episode one. Sure. Um, there was no thing in Batman. There was like no scene that like stuck out as like we were talking about like the bat breaking through the window scene. There was mm-hmm. no like powerful moment. Reading the Cameron script, I definitely pick up on some moments like the yeah. way he describes. I mean, for one, he's a fantastic writer. He's written some great movies like mm-hmm. the Terminators, yeah. fucking Aliens, Rambo 2. Dude, dude had some fucking chops. Yeah. Avatar for Christ's sake. Um, and yeah, there's definitely moments in the script that you, when you're reading it, you can picture like, oh, that would look really cool. Like, for example, the end when he defeats Electro, they're fighting on top of the World Trade Center and he starts falling in between the towers and they talk about electricity bouncing on both towers, you know, like kind of creating a web as he falls. Yeah. And like, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. I mean, even when Electro is like born, they kind of really just, he goes into a lot of description about it and there's tons of scenes in this that like would have been awesome. And there's like some cool action scenes. Mm -hmm. Like I would have seen this Cameron script. No, totally. I would have, uh, I should have read into it. Um, I'll tell you some other things. I don't know if we want to jump to it right now, but I do feel like that. I don't know if it came out in the Cameron script, but was the, the great power, uh, with great power comes great responsibility. 
was that um, kind of the same as uh, as it happened in the Raimi movie? Or it's a, it's because been a little bit the, since the Pope I... was different, uh, very different. It was very chill. They're sitting on uh, on the front porch yeah. of, uh, of Peter's house. It's just... not him bleeding in the street, right? And he's not. He's also not. Um, well, the bleeding in the street was after he got shot. Yeah, but um, it wasn't like uh, Peter being like a little prick to his uh, to his <laughs> no. uncle. We're saying like you know you're becoming the man now that you're going to be for the rest of your life. And in the Raimi movie, it was like, I'm doing some things wrong. I get it. You know, I'm going to figure it out. But in this one, he's like, you know what? You're right. You're right, Uncle Ben. And I have to fucking, I got to do something about this and become an amazing person. So I definitely thought that that was uh, much different than what Raimi or, I mean, maybe what I mean, Cameron did. But. I mean, it's pretty similar in the Cameron treatment of like, it's just kind of a casual thing because... Mm-hmm. The Uncle Ben's death is a little different in this too. It's like it's. I was talking about earlier how Spider Man couldn't get his money because of oh you need we need to know who you are for the TV show thing. Okay. He like convinces Uncle Ben to drive him to this like agent, and it kind of plays out the same in the movie that instead of a wrestling guy, it's an agent, and then the dude gets robbed and runs out and takes Uncle Ben's car and shoots him. Mm -hmm. And they don't they don't go into a lot of detail in the script because there's no real dialogue, right? Again, there's no with great power comes great responsibility as he's bleeding in the street. Right. No, I mean that happened uh before. He he doesn't say that when he's bleeding, you know, in the Raimi one. Yeah, and the the thing about the Raimi one is yeah, like you're saying, he's kind of being an asshole. Right. And he, you know, because he's trying there, to get there's into n- the wrestling. Place yeah, there's and, none of this none of that really in either of these scripts. Well, like no, it is in the well, actually, no, you're right about that, but um the wrestling thing is definitely yeah. in the in no. The, the wrestling script. thing is in the script. I'm talking about Peter being kind of a dick to right, Uncle Ben. That's true. Yeah, he's, that's uh, missing almost completely from both scripts. He's very calm and collected in uh, in the Cope script. Yeah, uh, from what I read, like they their argument comes from the fact that oh he got into a fight at school, right? And it comes together in a scene where we're showing the difference between MJ's life and Peter's life, mm-hmm. where MJ, which we'll talk about her in a little bit, sure. Um, she's lives next door and they talk about her going into her house and it's really terrible. Like people are yelling. Everybody starts yelling as soon as she walks in the door. Right. And she goes and sits on the porch with like her little sister or something. Yeah, grabs like a three year old. Yeah. Who never gets mentioned again. Them. Sure. And then, um, then we see Peter across the driveway or whatever, just on the porch with uncle Ben having a casual conversation of like, yo, you got into a fight at school and blah, blah, blah. With great power comes great responsibility. And then they kind of hug it out. Yeah, and then great. in the wrestling scene, it's just like he drops him off, and it's just like, "Oh, see you later," and that's right. it. And then it plays out almost uh, exactly yeah. from the Raimi yeah script, which uh, that's kind of a lot of things with the script is like you kind of have all the the big moments that are in the Raimi movie, but mm-hmm. like the bridging moments are kind of what's different. Yeah, that, that's uh, I agree with you there. Um, so I guess the last thing to really mention about the Cameron script that we can go full on in the Cope script. Is the MJ stuff, um, which MJ is, the, uh, again, no dialogues. They don't give you a lot mm-hmm. to talk about, but um, they they straight up go to Bone Town in yeah. the script where, uh, first of all, they turn him into kind of a creeper. There's a scene, again. Peter this, into a creeper? Yeah, this, okay. is, this is kind of, again, what I was thinking kind of 90s is the, uh, the sex appeal of the movie where, like, we got to have MJ being sexy. And there's, like, a scene where he's, like, watching her through her window, like, Right after he gets uh, makes his suit, and um, he's kind of going out at night, and he's starting. They talk about him getting kind of obsessed, like kind of again, like Batman. Like, yeah, the adrenaline rush. Yeah, and like he loves it. going out at night, where he used to be afraid. There's a lot of emphasis on things he used to be afraid of. He's not afraid of anymore. Okay. So like he loves being out at night, where before that was dangerous for him. Mm-hmm. So yeah, there's like a scene where he's creeping on MJ and watches her dressed down to her panties, and then it's like, oh no, I can't watch this. And it's just this, like, kind of, like, the way it reads, it's kind of... you got to give the audience what they it, That's need. exactly what it feels like. It feels like showing a panty shot for the sake of the guys in the audience, sure. which was kind of weird. And then, yeah, there's a scene later where they, he, he just, like, saves her from a mugging, and then they bone on top of the Brooklyn Bridge. You know, it, hey, that's, uh, that's not... I don't think it's too far from reality, seeing as how... You know the adrenaline is uh, is high, and I mean, from what I, yeah, I've heard, I, I a can't lot of blame them having sex after um, near death experiences. So I mean, listen, I, I know I'm just uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, but um, no, I completely agree with you. It is it is a bit odd. It, it, it just know? came off odd. That was the only thing. Totally. I mean, you know, if you're going to be going to a Spider-Man movie with your kids, and next thing you know, 
you know, Spider-Man's doing the dirty under the Brooklyn Bridge, you yeah. know, with MJ. Yeah. You know, half the crowd is, you know, very uncomfortable. The other half is laughing under yeah. the breath. So yeah. I, I think that would be interesting. I don't know if it would stay. I'm sure Cameron would uh, insist, but, um, you know, that, that's his movie. Yeah, and I mean, the takeaway from reading the Cameron stuff is I would have watched that movie, and I think it would have been pretty cool. Like, yeah. the technology wasn't there at the time. It would have it had to have catch up, but I would have watched that movie. Yeah. But, I mean, I am glad we got the Raimi one, which was basically based off this Cope script, which now we can go further in. Yep. Yeah, um, so, yeah tell me about it. I, I want to start with the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter's basically Peter. He's, as he's described, good. and Aunt May and Uncle Ben, they're yep. pretty much as you remember from the Raimi movie. Absolutely. Osborne, Harry, and Norman are a little different. Mm-hmm. Um, for one, we all know Harry Osborne, played by James Franco, kind yep. of a pretty boy, and he became who he became. In the script, he's portrayed as kind of more of like, not like an ugly kid, but an awkward kid. Yeah. And he's, you know, he he has his money. And... Well, yeah, he's got know. the overbearing father, yeah. you know, that puts insane amount of pressure on him at all times. Yeah, which Norman in this is way more strict and way more of an asshole. Yeah. Like, I think it gives him a little bit more character. Yeah, though. and I kind of like it a little better. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, Willem Dafoe did an amazing job, as he always does. Mm-hmm. But th- this Osborne is just way more ruthless. Yep. And it, it turns into the point where his whole goal is to just kill Harry. Whereas yeah, yeah. in the Raimi movies, you kind of get the sense that he's trying to protect both of them and both of their futures. And in this one, he's like trying to protect the future of his company by eliminating his son who might one day run it into the ground. Yeah, he needs uh, he needs to make sure that, you know, his uh, legacy is taken care of and he's willing to kill his own son yeah. to ensure that everything goes smoothly. Yeah, I mean, so the script starts on the field trip, whereas mm-hmm. in the movie, we got a little bit of stuff before that. Yep. But the, yeah, this script just starts on the field trip with Peter getting beat up in an alleyway and saved by an MJ who is the coldest bitch I've mm-hmm. ever read in a well, script. Yeah, that, she she is cold, but I also think she's a little playful when uh, you know he gets beat up and then she says, "You better get away from me," you know. But but she says it in a way that's like, of course. if you know what's good for you, absolutely. You know, I mean, she's uh, I, she's been around Flass her, her fucking honestly. I like as I was reading the script, I was like, I hope something bad happens to this character because she kind of deserves it. Also, I uh, I noticed that um, I guess Cope said that when she walked by all right we had a shot of peter looking at her like sighing to himself yeah and then she's walking by fucking harry's town car and she's looking at it sighing to herself that and i wrote in my fucking notes uh fucking gold digger wants harry's car oh absolutely in the first couple scenes yeah i was like well, get the fuck out of here she's not genuine at all no she's a fucking asshole like at no not until the point where I guess that's when Aunt May gets hurt. Does mm-hmm. she actually start to be nice to Peter? Which yeah. is damn near the end of the movie. Yeah, she's uh, she's pretty bitchy. Like, throughout the script, she's written in a way that I don't understand why this kid likes her at all. Right. Like, just because she's pretty? Like, and, Well, I mean, you know, she's lived across the street from him forever. Yeah, and I guess there is some dialogue talking about, like, how he knows her. And, you know, kind of like there is in the Raimi movies. Yeah, but, I mean, and she doesn't know it fucking thing about him no like she barely even knows his name there's so many references to how it's like oh yeah who are you again even though they've met like three times Mm -hmm. in the script right and right next to you just man she's written like such a bitch like Mm -hmm. i was i couldn't believe it no i i completely agree with you there i'll I'll tell you with the uh with the cope script i was really excited to see what kind of uh powers they would be showing as he as he grew into spider-man yeah. i guess in the earlier part <laughs> and a couple of parts i wrote down was uh let's see we have to talk about the first scene okay. of his like power usage all right you you started off um so it's it's basically the same where he gets so they're on the field trip he gets bit by the spider mm-hmm. and he gets sick and that scene is basically described exactly how it's, it is in the movie yep oh i forgot to say in the cameron script the way he gets his powers is a little different. It's, okay. it, 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 I mean, it's the same in the sense that they're on the field trip and he Spider gets bit bite. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But they're actually doing experiments on fruit flies. And one of the okay. fruit flies gets out and gets caught in the spider web. And the spider eats it, which I guess then transfers the powers to the spider, which then bites Peter. <laughs> Why? What's I, the, it's no such point. an extra step that right. I didn't understand. There is no point to that. No. It's so ridiculous. Oh, my God. Um... I mean, just think of any other superhero. It's like, uh, you know, I don't even fucking know. 
just something, some previous thing that happened. I don't know, like a bat. Uh, fucking. It, it, it's it was just an extra step. It made no sense. It made, yeah, there's no reason for it. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, just that's fine. I, I totally forgot the, about the fruit fly thing. <laughs> so, wow. So yeah, Peter gets his powers pretty much the same in the movie. He has the like, dream with the DNA sequences flying together and spider mm-hmm. dreams and stuff. And then I think then he wakes up with the wet dream with the web, like right. almost immediately. Yep. So like right right away, the first thing we see is the web and the spinneret in his wrist or whatever. And then he goes outside for school, as if I'm remembering this correctly, <laughs> yeah. and um. He almost gets run over by something. Right. Wasn't he yelling to MJ? Yeah, he's so he, like, he's he like, sees MJ. MJ and he's just like, yeah, fucking, I'm going to talk to her today. Yeah. And he's like yelling for her as a garbage truck, I think, or a bus yeah, is coming. A bus, around, yeah. yeah, some big vehicle. And he jumps 20 feet up in the air right in front of her and right. sticks to a building. It, from her point of view, kind of look, even though she somehow didn't see this guy just jump 20 feet in the air, it looks like a truck runs him over. And then she's just like, huh? Okay, whatever. And then just leaves. Yeah. I mean, she had like, she was shocked. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, well, whatever. They literally describe her being shocked as if she was about to see somebody get run over. And yep. then just brushes it off and leaves. Yeah. And somehow doesn't see a guy sticking to I, a building. I assume that's where the directing and the editing will come yeah. in. <laughs> and then, I mean, he basically skips school, right? And then just goes yep. and plays with his powers a little bit. Yep. Kind of kind of like the scenes in the movie, but like with some slight changes. No, I threw in the, uh, you know, I like, I like how the show is strength. How he's uh, basically crushing uh, yeah. steel pipes with his grip. Yeah, which I, I is really something like they the... never they never talk about it. I mean, no, not really. Not, not that they have to. No, but it's just it's exciting to just know that, or yeah, at least see any... on screen how strong this fucking guy is. Is there any real? I guess the demonstration of his strength in the movie is when he punches Flash and he goes flying. Right. Which I I wrote down here that uh, he better have fucking shattered his jaw because he had no idea how strong he was at the time. Yeah, he would have no uh, way to hold him back. I mean, not to bring back. I remember that he uh, when he, after he woke up from his fucking cocoon nightmare. Yeah. Um, he came out. It said like with the body of a god. Yeah. You know, um, which they do in the movie. Like he gets right. up and he's all ripped. Absolutely. Yeah. I and just thought I should. Uh, yeah. Big throw change. That in there. Yeah. Big change. Exactly. Which is all dialogue straight yeah. into the movie. It's, absolutely. I was in the script, so it's it's always interesting now that I'm reading more scripts that I see how this used to be a movie and how easy it is for these scripts to get passed around. Yeah. And not. Doesn't seem like too much work. I mean, listen, I'm not not putting anything by these guys, but they don't have to mess around with too much of the script to make a, here's your fucking movie. It's it's always really interesting to read one that is a movie that has come out. Mm -hmm. Like, the last one we looked at is a movie that never happened and probably will never happen. And this is one that it's a movie that came out and it's yeah. different, but there's a lot of stuff in there that's the same. It's 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 fun to read ones like that. I, Prometheus is another one I would recommend. Yeah. What I can't wait to look at is Alien Three, which has like four different. That movie has a whole production history that's a problem, but that has like four different scripts gotcha. that I can't wait to dig into. Okay. Cool. Um. But yeah, I did like the demonstration of powers, like the crushing of the pipes. Like you're right, there was nothing like that in the movie, right. and that it was more entertaining here. I I also think he like catches a car at some point, like catches or something's car, about to fall over. Three fucking story building, just straight up. Yeah, you know it's uh there's some cool stuff that they talk about. I don't know if they yeah in the uh, no in the Sam Raimi one they do discuss you know the different kinds of spiders yeah. that um I guess go into the one genetic super spider. So yeah, that that's cool that they don't, they don't really touch on it here. They just like right. oh we're we're messing with them. Yeah, they with, with the lady that doing. was uh, given the tour. You know, yeah. she just uh, throws in jumping spider, fucking uh, trapdoor spider stuff yeah. like that. So I I always enjoy picking up on those little things, but. I I love it when you know the continuity is there. Yeah. You know I want I want to see trapdoor spider man. Yeah. You know, that would be awesome. Some shit. You know. So uh, yeah. I mean the steel pipe. I I'll have to settle for that. But uh, one day you know who knows? Well, we'll uh, could you imagine trapdoor trap door. spider man? Yeah. That's a that's a fucking comic on its own right there. Yeah. That sounds like when they do the like the big cross. They did a Spider Verse crossover. Where they mm-hmm. had all these different Spider Man from different universes. And yeah. my favorite alternate spider-man a spider ham who's uh, it's a universe where everyone's a pig yeah and it's fucking no, it makes spider perfect ham. sense it's amazing yeah, i love it um yeah trador spider-man would be awesome <laughs> um the, uh, yeah he should have definitely broken flash's uh jaw from from what i saw yeah um 
and yeah, that fight scene pretty much plays out like in the movie. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, it's kind of the whole spider sense thing. Mm-hmm. One thing I will say is like, there's there's definitely some dialogue in here that's like, oh golly gee, guys! Like, there's a little comic booky dialogue. You, you yeah. when we when you were first reading it, you were mentioning somebody calls him uh, what do they call him? Puny Parker. Puny Parker, yeah, which that was is flash. Uh, yeah, definitely something from the comics, but mm-hmm. it is always weird in a movie. Um, yeah, yeah. And uh, th- there was a few more moments between him and Uncle Ben where it was kind of reading like a 60s Leave it to Beaver sitcom. Like, oh, we're the perfect family. And No, I agree with you. I did uh, totally. Um, I, I enjoyed how uh, Uncle Ben was a avid wrestling fan. Yeah. You know, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, they they introduced the Bonesaw character because he's watching him on TV, and he's like, hey, Peter, come look at this guy. Like, that was, like, as wrestling fans ourselves, no, that was absolutely. a little fun to read. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love uh, knowing that there's some uh, old guys out there. Yeah, and that are, that's uh, something I could see kids. that they might have had in the original script and maybe even filmed, but cut for time. Because mm-hmm. it, it, it makes sense for him to be yeah. into it. And it, it's interesting to note that, like, oh, Uncle Ben, if he had been at home, could have been watching Peter in the wrestling ring. Yeah, I mean, that those are the good scenes when... You know, you walk by, Uncle Ben is in bone saws on TV, and yeah. Uncle Ben's just like, yeah, get him, you motherfucker, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's always fun Yeah, that see. was fun. Um, I also, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, no human spider references. That w- I was a little upset with Yeah, that, they literally know? just come up with Spider-Man, like, right out of the gate. Right, yeah. That that was, uh, well, that was probably all... Um, Oh, Asher, what's his name? Bruce uh, Campbell. Bruce Campbell, yeah, yeah the, he probably yeah. threw his own two I mean, you can definitely there. feel like when you read this script that Sam Raimi could have looked at it and been like, oh, add my joke here, mm-hmm. my joke here. Yeah, like, it, it definitely yeah. reads that way. That, yeah, that's that's good. Uh, that's and he definitely seems like it. a guy who, a director who will let people uh, improv. Mm-hmm. And obviously when you get Bruce Campbell in there, there's going to be some improv. Yeah. How'd you feel about uh, Spider-Man uh, and uh, Uncle Ben's Murderer? You know, you know what I'm referring to, when uh, he fucking puts the web on him and throws him out the window, and the guy's falling to his fucking demise. Yeah, and then he and saves then he stop- him. He's like, "I can't do it. Yeah, I can't kill." I, th- I thought it was a little much. Yeah, I, I like the way. Surprising it- though. Yeah, I like the way it played out in the real movie. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of how. Like I mean, if the guy had to die or whatever, I don't think he, he died. Right? I mean, he, yeah, he tripped the, the, over the yeah, pipe. Yeah, he and... fell and he died. Okay. And in this one, he he doesn't die. Right? He just they end up no, just yeah, resting him. Fucking, uh, I guess he just ties him to the web and he's yeah. out of there. And so in the Cameron one as well, he catches the guy and like webs him up or ropes him up or something mm-hmm. and basically brings him to the police and throws him on a car and they're more interested in trying to arrest Spider-Man than yeah. taking care of this criminal and so that like frustrates him and he ends up leaving. Well, you know, vigilantes uh they yeah. they sell more papers than uh than your two bit run of the mill fucking Absolutely. muggers. You know, that's why Jonah probably hates his ass. He keeps fucking uh sticking all these terrible headlines on yeah. newspapers. People are going to fucking buy him. Yeah. Boom. Which I was surprised to read, J. Jonah in the script is a lot of the dialogue, and this is exactly how it is in the movie oh, totally. with, Jonah, with Jameson. Yeah. But I like the way he's a little more spread out. Like mm-hmm. they do add a lot more. Like when he's looking for pictures of Spider Man, it's a lot of cut to scene in the newsroom where he's talking about pictures. Cut to Spider Man doing yep. something and somebody snapping like a shitty picture. Mm-hmm. Cut back to the newsroom and Jonah's like, "This is terrible." Cut back to Spider Man and they kind of do a little back and forth for a little while yep. and, until it comes out like, "Hey, offer money for pictures." No, I thought, uh, yeah, and that, that's great that they, they stuck with the continuity of him being a photographer. Yeah. You know, so I, I definitely like seeing that kind of stuff. Let me ask you, um, when you uh, read about Goblin, were, yeah. what, what kind of uh, Goblin did you have in your mind? I mean, it was it, it was hard to separate what they were talking about from what I remember for the movie. Uh-huh. Like, I know there was early concept art out there for the movie where they wanted to do an actual, like, they wanted to make him look like he was in the comics. But right. But it just didn't work. And in this, they describe it as basically like a motorcycle helmet. And it, it kind of just, like, it was easier for me to just picture what was in the movie as I was right. reading it. Just because, like, hey, they did that work. I'll just fill it in my head there. Because a lot of the encounters with the Goblin are just like they are in the movie. Um, except they don't have a lot of their talking scenes, like, which actually is interesting to note. So in this script, there's no scene where like the goblin has them on a rooftop and they're like discussing stuff. That's actually in the Cameron script. Really? Yeah. But it's not in this one. So that was kind of interesting. Once again, it's nice to be Raimi in that situation. Yeah. Just being able to pull from wherever you want. Yeah, exactly. And I wonder if that was the case or maybe they just 
fucking serendipitous happened to come mm-hmm. up with the same idea. But I guess the in- the inclusion of Doc Ock kind of would get in the way of some of those things. Because, yeah. like, oh, we got to make time for this other guy now. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. Yeah, I kind of just pictured the same thing. And they, they definitely, in the script, go into more detail about how the equipment works. Mm-hmm. But Who, uh, Who's Doc's? Or, uh, um, Norman's. The Goblin. Norman. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, they do a lot of talking about how the helmet works with the board. Which okay. they don't really tell you in the in the movie that Let's like see. the glider and the helmet go hand in hand and that's how you steer yeah, it. That makes sense. But in the script, they're like, oh, when he moves his head or looks in ways, that's what directs the glider. I see. Yeah, I don't know why that. I guess that went over my head. I, I just never picked up. On I mean, that. I guess in the movie, you're just supposed to not really think about it. Sure. Like, hey, you know, it is what it no, is. No, I hear you, but you know, I was reading the script, so yeah. what the fuck was I reading? Yeah, I don't know. No, I agree, but. Uh, you know, you're saying he it felt like he was wearing a motorcycle helmet. I've, you know, I I, I know that it's uh it's not practical to have yeah. him wear like a, a kind of latex mask or something. Yeah. But I would love to see that type of thing. Yeah, I mean, I thought what they did in Amazing Spider-Man Two was kind of an okay trade, where like they kind of had him mutate a little bit with Harry. Mm-hmm. But um, oh, right, right, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, the, the Willem Dafoe thing never really bothered me. No, of course not. That what, you know, I'm just the armchair quarterbacking over here. No, if we, I would, I would love to see that. I can't wait to see what if Marvel does the character. I can't wait to see what they do with mm-hmm. it because they're staying more true to the look of the characters in the comics lately. Sure. Like in the first movies, like Iron Man and Hulk and shit like that, they were definitely trying to like, oh, how can we realistic this up? But now that everybody's so fucking bought in on Marvel movies, they're just like, do it like the comics. Yeah. Nobody's going to care anymore. Do you think we're going to get ourselves uh, maybe a glimpse? I hope so. uh, in this In the movie coming out yeah. next year. Um, or this year when this comes out. I mean, they're doing Vulture. Yeah, I'm sure There's we'll get been... some Norman somewhere. I, I I assume we'll get references to Oscorp. Yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe in a post credit because... scene, mm-hmm. we might see Norman. Yeah, because I don't know if they'd want to cast Norman already. No. I would think he'd be the main villain of, you know, the second or whichever one. Yeah, I mean, I just want to see them get to Venom and Carnage. That's all I really want. <laughs> yeah, let's let's hope that uh, that gets there before Infinity Crisis or whatever the yeah. fuck is going on. Yeah, I, I mean. I want him to do Norman just because that's a villain you have to do for Spider-Man, mm-hmm. especially yeah, for, as an early nemesis. villain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I want to see what they do because maybe they can get the look right. Mm-hmm. But no, I was. Uh, I'm reading my notes here. It says that uh, I like the two villains, even though Doc Ock was kind of uh, um, as little as he is in the movie. They use him well. Right. He he is uh, like another catalyst to Norman to show just how fucking evil this guy is. Yeah. You know, Doc's working on his. Uh, on his particle accelerator or whatever the hell's going on with yeah. his with his uh, oct- octopus fucking arms attached to him. Yeah. Norman walks up, says, "Clean your shit out." Guys, <laughs> like, uh, but I have one more day yeah. before let, my let, pension kicks in. Let's let's let, let's talk about that scene and uh-huh. work over there. So it is a long time before, like, we get Peter becoming Spider Man, and then everything kind of happens mm-hmm. with you know Uncle Ben's killer and blah blah. blah. It's like not until page like. 40 or something that we even touch back on the villains right. again, which we come to Norman and Harry going to Oscorp. Mm-hmm. And this is something I was also confused on because so Norman and Harry go into Oscorp and mm-hmm. it kind of implied that he's kind of showing Harry the ropes a little bit because yep. one day you're going to be taking over and Harry just, I guess, kind of disappears as Norman is talking to Otto doesn't he say go over Does there? Does he tell and him fire to him? go over there? Yeah, he goes go over there, and uh, it's time to be a fucking man. Grow a pair. I, I didn't catch that. Did you tell him to go fire Otto? Yeah, I, I thought believe so. Because well, I thought he Harry says something. That that scene. There's a lot going on. They're talking yeah, about because no, they're totally. in the lab and they're talking about all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And he's basically just berating Harry the whole time because that's like all Norman does in the script is talk about how shitty his son is. But um, yeah, he. They introduce Otto because, like, some fucking lab assistant guy kind of freaks out and runs over there. It's like, oh, my God, Norman's coming. And Otto's just like, I only care about my work. Leave me alone. No, I'm, I'm reading here. No, I agree with you. That That is correct. But uh, let's see. It says, Harry, uh, Dr. Octavius. Octavius turns. What do you want? Norman raises an eyebrow. Well, Harry swallows. Then turns, walks out of the lab. So he, oh, okay. he walks up to him. He's about to fucking fire his ass. And then he... You know, fucking pusses okay, out. Okay, I guess I missed the part where he told him to go fire him. Yeah, well, it, it was a uh, it 
No, you're right. It, it, he just raised an eyebrow, so it's yeah. not like there was dialogue. Yeah, there. That, so he does leave. Mm-hmm. Okay, because then, then because this then leads... the explosion and all that yeah. fucking shit. So, so it leads to Norman asking Otto, like, hey, what are you working on? And mm-hmm. he's basically just like, yeah, the super soldier serum, because that's going to be in every Marvel thing ever. <laughs> yeah. And um, they're like, yeah, but it's not working, right? It causes everybody to go fucking crazy. Right. And then he's like, oh, but I got all these other things that are fucking good to go, and you're going to make millions of dollars. And then Norman's like, all right, great. Well, your stock kicks in tomorrow, so you're fired today. And just like, oh, yeah, we keep all your work, but you can list me as a reference and see ya. Right. Which causes Otto to fucking lose his mind and thrash about the lab, which not that knocks the the gas out, mm-hmm. right? Right. His fucking tentacles go nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So and- then there's the explosion. Mm-hmm. Otto gets fused to his shit. Norman gets the gas. Right. Boom. We got our two villains. Right. Uh, no, I, every time I... Uh, think about that scene i just uh hear the words back to formula yeah <laughs> that's that's the fucking best. I, I fucking love yeah. that and yeah it, I, it's it's campy and hilarious and a lot of fun yeah and i don't care how many times it shows up on fucking hbo or show oh, the movie's always on i TV. just pop it on in the background yell back to formula yeah fucking goodbye spider-man and i'm Sp- just having a good time spider-man 2 is still like my all-time favorite comic book that's movie. yeah that, that's one movie that's uh is going to stand the test of time for probably absolutely. another 20 years or yeah, something like, like that. It's, it's still so it watchable. very good, absolutely. But uh, I'll, I'll tell you, one of the things that uh, we could talk about Spider-Man 2 just for one second, um, I don't, and, and this goes for all, uh, I guess, Spider-Man comics. Anytime he fights Doc Ock, um, he he should be killing this poor man. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just one. I I don't know. I don't know what Peter's fucking problem is, but uh, the implication he, being he has super strength and he's punching a regular dude. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. The implication being that he should jump on him, give him one uh, just gut yeah. punch, just yeah. uh, uh, and well, that's if it. You, if you think back to Spider Man Two, he never. I guess he does get some good hits in on him. Oh, oh my God! No, I, no. There I think have been back plenty to of the, times when I look at it and he's getting jacked in the face yeah. three, four times. Because I'm, like, I, oh I'm, I'm trying. I was thinking that oh, there's only the scene in the end fight where he's got him in the water and he's socking no, him no, in the no, face. No, no, no. There's, there's the, the but no. He totally when they're on the clock tower, he exactly. totally socks him in the head a couple mm-hmm. times and then. Yeah. I, 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 I can't believe it. I was going to say, mostly he's hitting the arms, or he's, like, defending against the arms. But no, he does get a good few shots in yeah, there. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure his sunglasses don't even fucking break. No, no I, I mean, don't think so. He's I, wearing them when he's still when he kidnaps them, I believe. Yeah, so. No, totally. I mean, I've... Um... You know, I've thought about this a lot, and I do think about that when I read, whenever I read the comics and everything with Doc Ock, because he's he's just crazy, and yeah. he's got these arms, and yeah, he might be protected in the chest a little bit from mm-hmm. the things stuck to his body, yeah. but overall, if a shot to the face should knock this dude oh, out. Oh, totally. They, you know, it's implied. It's always implied that Peter is pulling his punches. Yeah, and which is stupid. I, I mean, I guess that that's one of those uh, uh, small things that. I guess you dive a little bit deeper into Peter's character that um, I, don't, I don't know if he's being playful, but uh, he, some of these things he he's allowing. Well, if allowing you look at the movie, he respects Octavius. Oh, sure. Yeah. Whereas in the comics, Octavius has always been kind of a psycho. Mm-hmm. Like, especially if you read Ultimate Spider-Man, like Octavius seems like a bad dude right from the beginning. Is that the one where he uh, becomes Octavius or no, that's a superior Spider-Man, right? Yeah. That's superior where, I mean, technically it's the end of amazing Mm Spider-Man, which is like the main Spider-Man run. Like issue 700 is Peter Parker. They somehow have swapped bodies and Peter Parker dies, but gives Otto Octavius all of his memories, which turns him into a good guy. Right. And he's like, I'm going to be the best Spider-Man there ever was. And that's why he's superior Spider-Man. And then eventually Peter gets his body back and then they started amazing Spider-Man over again. And that's a whole fucking mess. I hear you. Um, but yeah, um, uh, uh, Goblin. Um, there is, they definitely do some emphasis on him being crazy with a split personality in mm-hmm. this one a little bit because it's yeah. a lot of him talking to mirrors and they describe it as like the Goblin is like tearing out of his skin and instead of in the movie he's like talking to the mask all the time. Right. And this he's literally like talking to himself in mirrors and shit and it's like oh the Goblin's one, like coming out of his body. He's got one mirror scene in the. uh 
Maybe the other one where he turns around and then he's. But like, he's just talking to himself. himself. Right. Whereas in this, it's described as like a creature like ripping out of his mouth or something. Like, that uh, yeah, that sounds uh, pretty crazy. I mean, they they definitely personified that gas. Uh, that, yeah. You know, crawled and fucking. Yeah, they talk about it like hugging him. over his exactly. body and like so, seeping into him. And yeah, I mean, I don't know if that happens to. Uh, Everyone that experiences the super serum <laughs> gas, you know, they all turn into fucking goblins. But, um, I, yeah, it, I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, it, it, do, it definitely gives some interesting visuals, you know, and I, I think that, uh, you know, audiences I mean, would definitely be. To me, reading it, I, I wasn't a huge fan. I like in the movie how he's just talking to the helmet sure. and, like, they definitely keep the relationship of he's like fucking groveling to this thing. Yeah. Like, Cause in the movie, he's like crawling towards the helmet, like, tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. But in this, it's more the goblins like, yo, I'm going to tell you what we're going to fucking do. And Norman's like, no, I can't do that. Yeah. And he's like, nah, you're, you're going to do it. Yeah. Cause kill I'm going to make you do it. Yeah. Right. Kill your son. No. Yeah. And he's like, no, I can't. That's that. my son. He's like, yeah, but we're going to kill him and you don't get a say in it. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then it just turns into a, whole thing of harry's trying to or the, the goblins trying to kill harry the whole time yeah i i you know a lot of the action scenes kind of uh from what i remember uh you know there was the one with the elevator and uh yeah harry at the Jane, end and then peter are... well, well first they do have the parade scene mm-hmm. the thanksgiving day parade yep. which is i mean the action is described as different from the movie because obviously an action choreographer is going right. to help with that but the whole thing is he's going there to kill Harry. There's no situation right. about the board trying to get rid of Oscorp, you know, or they're going to sell it or whatever, mm-hmm. which they're just, no, Oscorp's a fucking, there's even a line where he's like, no, Oscorp's just made like a billion dollars. We're fine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and this, it's just, he just wants to kill Harry. Yeah. That, I mean, that's, uh, I'm glad that they, they definitely showed uh, he had a couple x-ray bombs like he yeah. did in the, in the other one where everyone turns into skeletons. Yeah. And just no, falls I was around. that. That's, that's, that one's uh, kind of silly. That's always funny. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he, he definitely sounds uh, fucking menacing. Uh, I'll yeah. tell you that. So Yeah, they, they do a good job of making him seem crazy mm-hmm. and scary. Yeah, absolutely. How'd you feel about, uh, I guess, the closing uh, of the, uh, on the Brooklyn Bridge? Um, like I expected more, like, mm-hmm. I guess think, cause I expected it to be similar to the scene in the movie. So like mm-hmm. when it was happening, I was like, Oh, I thought more was going to happen. And then they, they kind of just move on from that. Yeah. It was a little bit deflating. Uh, and, and I think it moved a little quickly, but, um, you know, again, that, that's something that, uh, uh an action choreographer could. Yeah. And like, when you think about that scene in the movie, it's pretty memorable. Like mm-hmm. everybody remembers the bridge scene, which yeah. leads to the final fight. And this one, I like, if we're trying to think about it now. I don't even remember much about it. Yeah, I, I do remember that, uh, you know, um, out of nowhere, uh, Otto is climbing up the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, he really just comes, like, he's gone for a long time. Yeah, I mean, again, that tragic character that all he wants to do is see uh, Osborne die, and yeah. he's yelling for Peter to fucking kill him. Because I'm trying yeah. to remember, so there's the scene, okay, so the scene in the movie where the goblin busts into Jonah's office mm-hmm. and is asking for Peter Parker, Right. this time it's Doc Ock. Yeah, and Peter's in the office and says like I'm Peter, and then he grabs him. Is like, and basically he wants to find Spider-Man so he can find Norman. Exactly. And then he's just like, I'll be watching you, and then he leaves. Yeah, no, it seems like a nice guy. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, he. I actually thought there was it was going to turn into an action scene, and then he's just like, No, you're right. Good. Yeah, right. He, you know, he's a civil guy. Yeah, that's the thing. He just wants Norman. Right. I just I want the guy who's fucking with my pension. And you know, my work used my these fucking giant things to my body now. And that is the thing about Doctor Octopus is he's always like, "I am a monster," you know. Yeah, he he's got a he's he's very sad inside. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know. That was interesting just to see how like how they just pulled this character out, but mm-hmm. kept the scenes, and then just like switched some stuff around. Like, oh, now it's Goblin busting in the office. Yeah, like, that's I mean, that's always a fun comparison to the movie. I heard that uh, Cameron wanted to go with uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger for his uh, for his uh, yeah. Octavius, which because at the time he was doing Spider Man, he was doing True Lies. Okay, so him and Arnold fucking on top of the world. Yeah, which True Lies is one of my favorite action comedies. That's great. of all time. So I I, I could have seen it. Yeah, I, I would have liked to. I mean, he also wanted Leonardo DiCaprio for Spider Man, mm-hmm. which I also could see. Right. Which nineteen? This is like what's eating Gilbert Grape. Uh, Leo DiCaprio. No, I, I'd be down with it. Yeah, because it was the same year. I do again, though. I do think uh, he's a bit too pretty. 
um, DiCaprio, Garfield. Um, but, uh, I don't know. Peter was never like an ugly kid. He was just a nerdy kid. Right. No, they I never describe it. him as being like, because even in Ultimate Spider-Man, he's like a cool looking kid, like the yeah. way they draw him and everything. But it's just like, oh, he's a nerd. No, and they never I mean, even established why he's a nerd other than that, like, oh, he's smart. He's not like a Star Wars nerd or anything. It's just like, oh, he does really good in school. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. I just, uh, I can't, he, he can't be, he, I don't care if you're a nerd. He, he can't be good looking because then he's going to at least have some kind of uh, interaction with females. I mean, the thing that bothered me more is how Andrew Garfield, he was a skateboarder in Amazing yeah, Spider-Man. That, to me, I was like, no, he's a nerd. He's not an athlete. Right. Like, that makes no if sense. If anything, he should have, like, rulers uh, made uh, to be on the fucking skateboard and, yeah. you know... Everything should be level. Like, that would bother me more than, like, what he looks like, you know? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, nowadays, it's like I'm uh, I'm way too much of a stickler when I'm looking at the actual <laughs> characters, maybe, like, the casting of it. I'm like, nope, I can't. I don't like this guy. I don't see it. Um, some some people are, like, made for the roles, you know, Tony yeah. Stark, whatever. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I, I mean, I I'll say... Like, I'm I do s- like the new Spider-Man. See, I'll that say I'm still not sold on him. Okay. I thought Civil War was I great. I his look, yeah. I thought he he looks good in the costume and everything. I just don't think I've seen enough. I'm actually kind of worried about this Spider-Man movie. Spider-Man is my all-time favorite comic uh-huh. character, so I'm going to be a little more... Critical. Critical, yeah, about this one. Than I would any of the other stuff. And I thought Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire were both fine in their own respective movies and ways. Yeah. Um, the way I always described it is I thought Andrew Garfield was a better Peter Parker and Tobey Maguire was a better Spider-Man. Okay. Because, like, Tobey Maguire's voice and the costume and everything I thought worked better. Like, the character was written better in Amazing Spider-Man, but, you know, whatever. Sure. Tom Holland, I thought he did, I thought he was fine in Civil War, mm-hmm. but I haven't seen enough of him to be, like... Yes, he is Spider Man. Yeah, no, totally. I, and I just it. some of the things I'm hearing about the movie, I'm a little worried. The trailer, I think, is supposed to come out tonight as we're recording this. By yeah, the time I think this so. releases, everybody will have seen it a thousand times, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But because um, I think it comes out on like Fallon tonight or something, so hopefully they they sell me on it. But I don't know. No, I've uh, I don't I don't know. I haven't heard too much about uh, about what's going to be happening in the trailer, but. Um... Yeah, you know, I yeah, I assume it's going to be good. Um, I feel like they're definitely trying to go with a much more comic book type feel to the movie. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Marvel's definitely like to me the current state of Marvel feels more like the comics than mm-hmm. early Marvel universe. Oh, definitely. Like the, I was talking to Chris the other day, like Marvel Civil War feels like something right out of the pages, whereas like Iron Man definitely felt like more of a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, fuck. I, the original Iron Man was by far one of the best. Oh, absolutely. Anything uh, Marvel's put out. So. Like, I would definitely put like Dark Knight, Spider Man Two, and the first Iron Man as like my top three comic books. Okay. Not necessarily in that order. No, but. I hear you. Yeah, that's that's a very fair assessment. Um, all right. So, how uh, how are we feeling about this? Oh, you know what? Um, before I don't know what we're doing. Before we. Uh, <laughs> You know, before we change uh, directions here, I did write down there was an interview with David Cope about what really? he would have what he would have wanted in a Spider-Man movie if it was made by him. Um, I did not paraphrasing see this. here. You're more prepared than I am. Ah, uh, well, listen, the, just a quick rundown here. Um, basically, what he wanted was uh, three different kinds of Spider-Mans. What he would have wanted. Uh, basically, like three different people or no, one no, no, Spider-Man? Uh, three but... different uh, Spider-Man movies where oh, okay. one would have been the original Spider-Man, which would have been your basic uh, Sam Raimi movie, yeah. big blockbuster hit. Yeah. Then he would have gone with uh, an amazing Spider-Man, which would have been a uh, smaller budget, 75 to $80 million <laughs> yeah, small. Uh, by his fucking version. Well, uh, yeah, I'm sure um, that first one was like yeah, 120 or something. The, the words that were used uh, by him were a rougher, edgier, almost rated R type feel to it. Okay. Uh, for for the for the amazing Spider Man, and then to top it off, he would have done a spectacular Spider Man, which would have been more for the kids, because uh, as of those previous two, it looks like uh, a small or I guess a large chunk of the population mm. isn't really into I guess the amazing or the regular Spider Man. He, he's I guess he's he wasn't planning on doing. Uh, the same Spider-Man for the same actor. Yeah. But um, it is definitely interesting when you're looking at... Oh, this uh, guy had a big dream. Yeah, he had a, he had a dream. It's interesting seeing what uh, David Cope would have done with these... If if he had his uh, hands on the, on the trilogy. Yeah. So it, it's, it's different, and uh, I would have liked to have seen it. I feel like, uh, you know, the general public also would have enjoyed it. What do you think? Um, I don't know. That's... 
to me, Spider-Man is never a character that should go rated R, Mm -hmm. but they've definitely, there was a Marvel Max series for a while, which is, that's where like the Punisher thrived, Sure, which was basically like R-rated comics, and they did do a Spider-Man run. I haven't read it, but I'm sure it's great. Um, I mean, I would watch it, just because I'll watch anything with Spider-Man, and I like the idea of having like, oh, like Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, Spectacular Spider-Man. Right. That was what I liked about the movie, actually, is how they're like, oh, we're going to call this one Amazing Spider-Man. I yeah. thought that was the right move. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I would I would be into it. Yeah. I would I would definitely check it out. I'd I, love to read a script for each one. I mean, not that, obviously, not that Spider-Man really lends himself to a rated R uh, type of product, but um, it definitely would have been uh, pretty cool stuff. I mean... The, I think in the uh, Amazing Spider-Man, that would have been something where you could uh, introduce Carnage or, uh, yeah, or, a, or a Venom or something like that and really get some fucking dark shit going where obviously Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker, is the is the light of the of the movie where yeah. everything else is just so much fucking dark. Not to make it a <laughs> Batman movie or anything, but... Um, See, that's the thing. I would never want my Spider-Man to be Batman. Of course. Yeah, and that was that was one thing that was kind of bugging me about the Cameron script is how it's always like at night and he was, mm-hmm. it sounded very Batman like for a little while. But I then again, Batman was the fucking standard for superhero movies back in the eighties, so it's it's hard to blame him. Because I mean, this was early nineties. Batman came out in eighty eight. Superman had kind of done its thing, but I mean, mm-hmm. Superman three, the reception to that one yeah. kind of was killing it for a little while. That was with, uh, that was with Richard Pryor. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, was, I, I never, I never saw that, was, that movie. I just know that it's I've, fucking laughable. I've seen, um, actually, so I li- the the podcast. How did this get made? They did mm-hmm. an episode on that, which yeah. made me look up the opening credits for Spider Man Three. Fucking YouTube the opening credits for Spider Man Three. Yeah, it's incredible. What are they for Spider Man Three? I mean, sorry, for Superman. Okay, 3. yeah. It's, okay, it's I'll check it out. It's yeah. amazing. All right. Um, it makes me want to watch that movie. Mm-hmm. Also, that's where Superman fights another Superman. Like his no, evil version does. comes out of Bizarro him. Bizarro Superman. It's just like an evil version comes out of him and he goes around being drunk Superman and then. <laughs> oh yeah. I remember parts of yeah, like, he's like Superman. breaking bottles with yeah. peanuts in a yeah. bar or whatever. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. It's such a fucking bad movie, but that, <laughs> that was around this time when this okay. script was being tooled around. All right. So All right. it's hard to blame him for like doing anything similar to Batman. Yeah. So then I guess this must have been really ahead of its time, you know, if, uh, if yeah, we're looking I mean, at. It's that amazing kind of that we're reading a script from 1993, and it sounds almost identical to a movie that came out in 2001, 2000. Uh, I'll have to look that I think up. 2000, because I or no, I, God, I always I always get these mixed up with like Star Wars in my head because uh-huh. I was like I know Star Wars Episode Three was 2004, and I always want to say Spider Man Two was 2002. Okay, well, once uh, you know, but yeah, Spider-Man you got 2 it. 2001 might, was it? And I, I'm moving too slow because I always get, I always get confused. Like, oh, Spider-Man Two probably came out in 2004, mm-hmm. but I can never remember. Yeah. Okay. Where is it? Give me um. Some. But I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there's definitely like the script might be similar, but there's there is stuff missing. Like, mm-hmm. there's no scene where they're fighting in a burning building, right? With uh. Greg Goblin and Spider Man, mm-hmm. but they do have the instead of cutting his arm, he cuts his hand at the parade. Yep. And how I was talking earlier, where they mix up some scenes, the parade scene right after the parade scene is like the Thanksgiving scene, mm-hmm. which fuck. Now that I'm thinking about it, oh no, I guess the Thanksgiving. No, the Thanksgiving Day Parade is on fucking Thanksgiving. Yeah. So, and then in the movie, it's way later when they're having Thanksgiving together. Really? I'm just fucking putting this together. So he tries to kill his son at the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And then in the script, they immediately go to the Thanksgiving dinner. Right, and which makes it's sense. it's pretty much the same where he's on the ceiling and then the blood drips right, and right. He's, he's gone. And he's got the cut on his hand, which shows him that yeah. it's Spider-Man. I have to go. Do yeah. It, and then uh, and do then, with her what you will. And yeah. Then she's which like this Mary Jane whatever. was such a bitch that right. I couldn't yeah, care less. Yeah, it makes sense. Um... Yeah, I just fucking realized in the movie, there's like a whole bunch of shit in between that, and it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you, families can obviously have Thanksgiving not on Thanksgiving, right? but it makes more sense in the script. Mm. I just now put that together. Okay, well, the, we'll have to <laughs> go back and look at that. Yeah. God, I'm going to have to rewatch this movie now. Because, yeah, in the script, in the movie, it's the the parade fight scene, and then I want to say it jumps to later... Harry coming into the house and seeing his dad. Right. And I think he's like kind of passed out. 
Because that's the first time we see the goblin is at the the parade scene. That's right. When he flies we're in we're for talking the about the, in the, the movie. In the movie in the yeah, movie. yeah, Sam Raimi movie. Yeah. So the first time we see the goblin is at the parade scene, Thanksgiving uh-huh. Day parade. Right. And then after that, we get Harry coming into his home, and Norman is like passed out, and that's when they find out about the act. That's when they talk about the accident at the lab. Sure. Yeah, and then there's some other shit, and then they're having Thanksgiving dinner. Are, why is there Thanksgiving dinner so far after Thanksgiving Day? Maybe, it, how do we know it's not the same day? I mean, they did a lot in a day, if that's the case. But as far as my memory of the movie, I kind of want to rewatch it now just for this. Yeah. That's a continuity error I never put together until just oh. now. Well, well, I, I, yeah. Well, Again, not that families to... can't nah, celebrate hear, on yeah, Thanksgiving. Yeah, totally. But yeah, they definitely, definitely make a point to say it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, that's interesting. And I maybe they don't call it the Thanksgiving Day Parade, mm-hmm. but what other fucking parade in New York would it be? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't... So but, it definitely makes more sense of the script. Yeah. Just put that together. That's a, that's an interesting find there, Jer. Yeah. Yeah, right, well. You gotta fucking get Ramey on the phone. Mm, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> yeah. All right. So, uh, I'm warning you, Spider-Man, I'm no purse snatcher or chain grabber. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that's just one of the <laughs> that's lines. That's one of your I, notes. Yeah. I also have a note on some dialogue where we have a lot of spider puns, like tangled web. Okay. We're like, I can't remember. Somebody, I think it's Norman who might have says, or he's like, oh, isn't that a tangled web? And this is like after yeah, he's yeah, you know, figured right. out They're, who Peter is. Yeah. It's just like... If somebody was doing that to themselves, like rubbing their chin maniacally, and yeah, somebody just picks exactly. what are you Everyone doing? Here, goblin talk is pretty lame. And then I had in quotes, can't kill you, but you'll wish you were dead. And yeah. I can't kill yeah. you. Yeah. There was, I mean, for the most part, there's definitely a lot of dialogue that is word for word from the movie. Yeah. But there's clearly like, oh, a, another pass would happen, which obviously it did. And uh, some of this dialogue would have to be cleaned up because it's definitely really cheesy comic book dialogue mm-hmm. or just really generic dialogue that's just oh, yeah. not going to work. Let me ask you, how'd you feel about uh, the Uncle Ben scene with um, when Peter was in his dream, when he was dreaming on the couch? I didn't. That was really weird. And I was mm-hmm. like, as I was reading that, I was thinking, OK, in Spider-Man 2, there's the dream sequence where after he quits Spider-Man, which he all he quits being Spider-Man in this script as uh-huh. well, which is weird. There's some things in Spider-Man 2 that are in this script. Right. And um, he also quits in the Cameron version. Okay. Um, which I should also note, both versions have him buying a new suit as like a Halloween yeah. costume. I couldn't imagine. I don't know how legit this fucking Halloween costume is, but he must have looked yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Fucking running around probably like with the with the muscles in there yeah. and everything. It, that that <laughs> when I was reading it, I like, was like, I guess the, the implication would be the Halloween costume because I mean, he, he the the costume is homemade in all versions yeah. of the script. So you could imagine they could make a Halloween costume that would look exactly like his costume because mm-hmm. they they have such good pictures of him thanks to Peter Parker. Yeah, um, that you could imply. I mean, I guess in the movie it would have looked identical, but sure. it is. It's it's a fun, ridiculous little thing that yeah. suits a Spider-Man story, right? I mean, and it, I love that that carried over from both versions. If you if that really happened though in the fucking movie, and he, I mean, and he's wearing some hokey costume yeah. while it, the end scene where he's fighting Doc <laughs> Ock in some ridiculous fucking Halloween costume. I don't know. I mean, it that reminds amazing. me of the old PlayStation game where mm-hmm. there was a costume, the amazing bag man, which I think is from okay. one of the comics where it's like, Oh, he didn't have his costume with him. So he put a paper bag over his head. Yeah. I, feel I, like I, I definitely recall get, that. Yeah. It was like an unlockable costume in the old PlayStation game. That's amazing. Well, uh, let's see. Mary Jane. Hit, okay. Yeah. That was the no reaction. Yeah. yeah I mean, um, I thought it was interesting the uh, the Uncle Ben scene where he's asleep. And yeah, that's he's what I was like, talking um, about. He's like, "Well, you better uh, wake up, Tiger, or uh, you know, you've got to learn yeah. to be who you were meant to be." It was a like really that, so. weird dream se- like because yeah, that's what I was comparing it to. Was as I was reading this, I was thinking of the Spider Man Two dream sequence where he gives up being Spider Man and then. They don't even show him sleeping. It just cuts to like a scene where they're sitting in a car and everything is all white around them. And yep. He's talking about how he doesn't think he can do it anymore. And, you know, Ben gives him the speech. Sure. You know, great power, great responsibility. And, you know, finding that balance or whatever. 
and it's just as abrupt in this script, but for some reason it rubbed me really wrong in the script. Mm. And I think back to Spider-Man 2, and I'm like, it's ridiculous in both. Why doesn't it bother me in the yeah. movie? Well, Because I, I was thinking back to it, I was like, man, that is kind of a ridiculous scene. No, that, and for that, some reason in the movie, it just doesn't bother me. Absolutely. No, I agree with you. And I also there was also a scene in the movie where we see Uncle Ben's uh, head in the clouds. Yeah. And then there's a flash of lightning. Yeah, it's like, isn't it when he... Isn't it when he... It's after the fucking... He catches the guy that... Yeah. That killed him. And then he's like on the roof of the place, basically screaming at the sky. And Uncle Ben's like is in the sky. Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben in the cloud seems a bit hokey. But if done right, could be very powerful. Echoes, great power, great responsibility. Yeah. Skull face. I would love to have seen like a storyboard of that just okay. to see what their idea was, but I thought that was a little ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, again. And I, I guess the dream sequence thing, the reason it bothers me so much is the fact that Uncle Ben, I guess in the way in the movie, the way they do it, it's implied that this could just be like Peter having an argument with himself in his head. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the movie, it's literally like, hey, I'm Uncle Ben's ghost and you're dreaming. <laughs> and that's, it just really came off super weird to me. Yeah. Uh, uh, how'd you feel about uh, Martin Sheen as the, uh, the from your previous ones from Amazing Spider-Man? Yeah. Um, I thought he was kind of an asshole. They didn't. He wasn't in the movie for very much. I thought he was a little rough. Okay. And I it really bugged me that they never gave you the great power, great responsibility line in the first movie. Did that not happen. They 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 do a similar thing, but they don't say those words, well, and that that bugs that, me then. just because like. Yo, I don't care if you're trying to be different. That's fucking Spider-Man. Don't yeah, mess no, with that. I, I need to fucking hear my fucking line. That's yeah. what I get the goosebumps for. That's what I'm paying yeah. my 1150 for. Yeah, and they didn't do it. Um, but I mean, I thought he was fine, but he came off a little, a little more hardened. I love the Uncle Ben in the same Raimi yeah. movies. He is great, and it's exactly how I picture reading the script. That dude was the best Uncle Ben. No, I I agree with you. Um, it, it's funny that uh, you mentioned that guy because um, watching old movies, uh, yeah. I this guy pops up really? all the time as a younger guy. He was in uh, uh, Escape from New York. Really? See, I've never seen it. I've seen Escape from Holy L.A. Shit. I've never seen no, Escape I just, from New York. Anytime I see these guys now, I just start fucking laughing uh, because oh, to me amazing. that's Uncle Ben. But yeah. there's some other fucking jamoke who saw that in the '80s, be like, "Yo, that's the president from fucking." <laughs> is he the, who he fucking is? He's the uh, president in Escape from New York. He might be the president in uh, Escape from L.A. Uh, oh, actually, I see, I've seen Escape from LA because I the president. No, the pre- it's the president's daughter. Well, no. Oh, I, yeah, but I guess. Well, the president's daughter in the second one didn't give a fuck about her, so he's <laughs> like, "Yeah, just kill her." But um, the president from uh, Escape from New York is actually the doctor from uh, Halloween. That crazy oh, bald guy who's just Doc- running around, him. Michael. Michael. That's uh, Donald Pleasance. Okay, you know him, but yeah, because yeah, he was uh, the he, guy. He was James Bond's arch nemesis. Really? The James Bond. He, yeah, he played Blofeld, who is Blofeld. like the leader of Spectre. Okay. And um, the and he Christoph Waltz spoilers is yeah. Blofeld and Spectre. Man, that guy got a lot of fucking acting gigs in the eighties and seventies that I had no fucking idea. Yeah, I I didn't know. It kind of makes me want to go back and rewatch some of those. Yeah, because I He's fucking love him as Uncle Ben. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Believe me, he could be a evil prick as just like generic <laughs> old white man. I mean, that's so just the sign uh, of a good actor. Yeah, that it, it's good. So, um, I think uh, as a whole, well, I, think, I just found out that Joe Manganiello played Flash Thompson in Spider Man. Yeah, the, the guy wow, from True Blood. You're right. Yeah, that's Holy him. Shit. That guy was Jack now. Yeah, that just right. blew me away. Cliff Robertson played Ben Parker. Cliff Robertson, who yeah. is uh, the guy we just talked about. Yeah. yeah. Out if he's on the... Uh, he was Uncle Ben. He's Uncle Ben and uh, the president from... Uh, please tell me he's the president. Oh, I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm not like on his page. I just, I'm kind of just looking at his, like, oh, more famous movies. Yeah, but he did a lot of old, like, kind of looks like some spy and war mm-hmm. movies and stuff. Oh, totally. Um, so, yeah. Uh, as a whole, I think... Um, the Cope movie would have been uh, pretty interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's pretty similar to what we got, so it's hard to argue yeah. with that. Yeah, I mean, that, uh, again, but, um, I think it would have been great for general public. Uh, all you did was take the Raimi movie and take out a couple scenes. Um, would have been interesting to see Tobey Maguire covered in his own jizz. He was in Escape from L.A., and he was the president. There we go. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, Uncle Ben, always great. Um, I would love to have seen him uh, cheering on Bonesaw 
in uh, yeah, in, in uh, the fucking in the movies that ready. we were reading. Yeah. Um, but uh, how'd you feel about the Cameron as a whole? How do you think it would have uh, hit um, general audiences? I mean, at the time, it's hard to imagine. I mean, it's hard to imagine Cameron ever doing anything wrong. Because mm-hmm. I mean, what he had fucking Aliens, Terminator, Terminator Two, Abyss, uh, True Lies, sure, and that's just his early career. Not to mention he made the two highest grossing movies of all time. I think it would have been great. I think the technology would have held it back to like, like we definitely would have remade it by now. Uh-huh. Like, like as I said, there was some '90s stuff in it. The 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 kind of the sex stuff and. Some of the changes they made, as I mentioned, the fly and shit like that. Um, I think it would have been good for the time, but I definitely think we would have remade it by now. Maybe even by the 2000s when the other one came out. Sure. But um, it would have been interesting to see what what would have been different after Cameron. Yeah, I, I think it would have been uh, pretty sweet. Um, yeah, yeah. As I said, reading it, I really enjoyed it. Like, the, I, I think I kept like every time you walked by me as I was reading, I was like, man, this is actually really good. Yeah, so, I, I wish I would have uh, had, you know, if I would have checked out the uh, Cameron one, maybe I'll do that on my own time. But, yeah, for uh, sure. I, I would recommend it. To yeah, anybody totally. who's a Spider-Man fan, I would highly recommend checking it out. Because it's not that long. Because it's, it's not like a real script. It's mm-hmm. basically just like, oh, here's some blurbs about what would ha- what I want to happen and stuff like that. Okay. And he definitely talks about, like, there's definitely scenes where you're just like, oh, here's the theme here and here's why this is going to represent that. Like, talks a lot about, like, the duality between being good and evil and uh, Electro is like a father figure because they both have their superpowers, you know. Yeah, I would have liked to have uh, read a little bit more on uh, Sandman and Electro. See what kind. Yeah, of, uh, I mean Sandman's kind of incidental. Yeah, but uh, Electro is is it's an interesting take. Sure. And like it definitely would have annoyed comic fans because like oh that's not the Electro I know, but it would have been an interesting movie. And like coming off of like eighty nine Batman, I think it would have been right up there with that. All right. All right. Well, that was. Uh... That was pretty great. Yeah, and that was uh, it. again, thanks for having me on. Oh that no, was a thanks good time. for thanks for being my first repeat. So Awesome. Yeah. All that'll right. it's gonna be great. Uh, I think it was another great episode. Mm-hmm. Um anything you need to you need to plug your Twitter again or anything? <laughs> no, no, I, I don't have anything to plug. I'm uh I'm gonna plug myself, so uh that that's it for me. All right, and so again, thanks for sitting with me. And as always, you can email the show at shelved podcast. Sorry, shelved film podcast at gmail dot com. You can find us on Tumblr to find the scripts for the next episode at shelled film podcast dot tumblr dot com. And then you can follow us on Twitter at at shelved podcast. I really had to make everything as wordy as possible, so it was hard to get out in one breath. But uh, all right, everyone, thanks for listening, and Eric, thanks for joining me. Thank you.